As of this moment, credible reports indicate that Myanmar security forces have murdered at least 70 people. Madam President, those murdered were fathers, sons, mothers, daughters, husbands, and wives. They were educators, they were engineers, they were students, they were many ages, but more than half of those murdered were members of Generation Z, or young people under the age of 25. Madam President, the country of Myanmar is being controlled by a murderous, illegal regime. Its current leadership perpetuated the atrocity crimes that are the focus of the charge of genocide before the International Criminal Court of Justice. That was UN Special Rapporteur on Myanmar, Tom Andrews, speaking there. And his comments followed news that nine protesters were killed by security forces on Thursday, leaving more families mourning the loss of loved ones. She has a son, is two months pregnant, and a husband who was determined to join protesters on the streets of Myanmar. He goes to the protest every day, even though I ask him not to. I told him there'd be trouble if something happens, because we have a child and another baby on the way. But I can't stop him. Aimwatthu's children will be raised without a father. Her husband, Chitman Thu, shot dead by security forces at a Yangon protest. He said it's worth dying for. He's worried about people not joining the protest. If so, democracy won't return to the country. He's worried about democracy. Now what, that he's passed away? The violence isn't slowing down in Myanmar. Peaceful protests are met with a vicious repression in what rights group Amnesty International is calling a killing spree. More protesters were killed across the country on Thursday. The bloodshed not intimidating those at the demonstrations. We protest peacefully, but they crack down on us violently. It's OK. The more they crack down, the stronger the revolution is. We will continue until we win. The protests started last month in response to the military seizing power and detaining civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi. The ruling junta made their most serious allegations against her to date. Without evidence, they claim Suu Kyi took illegal payments of 600,000 US dollars and gold. An MP from her party denied the allegations. The military also reiterated that they will remain in power until new elections are held, but haven't offered a date. That isn't good enough for the protesters, who have vowed to continue their demonstrations, no matter the cost. And we can speak to an activist now. David is joining us from Yangon, and we're not using his full name in order to protect his identity. David, we've seen there the, the risks that people are willing to take to go out onto the streets. Why is it so important for you to continue protesting? Well, um, since the start of the revolution, we have a roadmap towards victory in this revolution which consists of three components. The first one, which is the most important one, is civil disobedience movement. The second one is uh, peaceful assembly and peaceful protests. And the third one is the continuous support to legally elected consulate members called CRPH. So I, I, we believe these three hangs in balance and uh, we have to keep doing what we are doing. And, uh, and, and it's sort of like um, the frustrations they get, uh, the military get from civil disobedience movement, movement are being drawn upon the protesters. Hmm. And the more they uh, try to, you know, sub, uh, try to pressure us, the more they try to harm us, the stronger we get. And, and I think it is also important that we, as a public, do not fall into the attempt of making this as, their, as a normal um, Myanmar, normal country okay. under this military regime.
And yet, you know, the violence is escalating. We're seeing more and more people dying on the streets. Are you worried that this roadmap that you described might not work? Um, I, I believe in the roadmap. And because uh, um, inside the country and the atmosphere that we get and their action are speaking directly towards us is that they cannot hold on anymore with this civil disobedient movement. That's why they are trying to crack us down and they are trying to make us, uh, you know, to be quiet so that they could persuade the staff who are doing CDM back. So the harder they try to, you know, silence us, the louder we're going to shout out. We're not, we, we okay. can't let that happen. What about the role of the civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi here? Because she's facing new charges that she was uh, illegally given $600,000 and gold bars by a political ally. Uh, does she still play a role in your movement? How important is she still? Um, the, I think this is the very old playbook of the military, which they have been doing uh, since 1962. They forge evidences, they create fake cases, and so far it has worked for them. But this time, more important question is whether the world and the country is going to uh, dignify their falsely accused cases. Mm -hmm. And the question about Aung San Suu Kyi being uh, a role model towards us, the harder they make Aung San Suu Kyi to be free, uh, the larger their supporters grew and the larger our admiration and, and our hope to get her back is, uh, is, uh, is clear, okay. the clear it becomes. We'll have to leave it there. Activist David joining us there from Yangon. Thank you so much. Thank you.